The word, iguana, is derived from the original Taino name for the species, iwana. In addition to the two species in the genus Iguana, several other related genera in the same family have common names of the species including the word, Iguana. The species is a popular quarry for pets, and has been widely introduced beyond its native area, into Ishigaki Island, Florida Peninsula, Hawaii, numerous islands in the Lesser Antilles, Singapore, Thailand, and Taiwan. Iguanas have historically featured in the culinary traditions of Mexico and Central America. Iguana meat is also consumed in parts of the United States and Puerto Rico. Also, the eggs of iguana are consumed in some parts of Latin America, such as Nicaragua and Colombia. Iguana is a genus of herbivorous lizards that are native to tropical areas of Mexico, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. The genus was first described in 1768 by Austrian naturalist Josephus Nicolaus Laurenti in his book Specimen Medicum, Exhibin Synopsin Reptilium Amendatum Cum Experimentis Circa Venena. Two species are placed in the genus, the green iguana, which is widespread throughout its range and a popular pet, and the lesser Antillean iguana, which is native to the lesser Antilles. Genetic analysis indicates that the green iguana may comprise a complex of multiple species, some of which have been recently described, but the reptile database considers all of these as subspecies of the green iguana. A phylogeny based on nuclear protein coding genes, reviewed by Vidal and Hedges, 2009, suggested that the subclade iguania is in a group with snakes and anguimorphs lizards. These groups share an oral gland capable of secreting toxins, a derived trait. The phylogeny based on whole mitochondrial genomes, though, as proposed by Rest et al. 2003 places the green iguana as the closest relative of the mole skink Plestodon egregious. Lepidosaurs are reptiles with overlapping scales, and within this group both iguanians and tuatars spinodin, project their tongues to seize prey items instead of using their jaws, which is called tongue prehension. Iguanians are the only lineage within the schemata that display this trait, meaning that it was gained independently in both Iguanians and Tuataras. Iguanians are also the only squamates that primarily use their sight to identify and track prey rather than chamoreception or scent, and employ an ambush technique of catching prey instead of active searching. The Central American iguana sometimes considered a distinct species, is largely considered synonymous with I. Iguana as the presence of horns does not necessarily indicate a new species or subspecies. The two described subspecies of I. Insularis, the St. Lucia horned iguana, I. I. Sanctaluciae, and the Grenadines horned iguana, I. I. Insularis, were originally described as subspecies of I. Iguana, although they are genetically very similar and may not be separate subspecies from one another. Recent studies have recovered I. Rhinolipha and I. Insularis is distinct species based in genetics, but the reptile database disagrees with these conclusions, and classifies I. Rhinolipha as synonymous with I. Iguana, and I. Insularis is a subspecies of I. Iguana. The Curaçao population of green iguanas shows major genetic divergence and may also represent an as of yet undescribed species or subspecies. Iguanas can range from 1.5 to 1.8 meters, 5 to 6 feet, in length, including their tails. These lizards possess a dewlap and a row of elongated scales running from the midline of their necks down to their tails. Iguanas have varying types of scales covering different areas of their body, for example, some large, round tuberculate scales are scattered around the lateral region of the neck among smaller, overlapping scales. The scales on the dorsal trunk of their bodies are also thicker and more tightly packed than those on the ventral sides. These scales may be a variety of colors and are not always visible from close distances. They have a large, round scale on their cheeks known as a subtympanic shield. Iguanas have keen vision and can see shapes, shadows, colors, and movement at long distances. Their visual acuity enables them to navigate through crowded forests and to locate food. They employ visual signals to communicate with other members of the same species. The tympanum, the iguana's eardrum, is located above the subtympanic shield, or, ear shield, behind each eye. Iguanas are often hard to spot, as they tend to blend into their surroundings, and their coloration enables them to hide from larger predators. Like most reptiles, an iguana has a three-chambered heart with two atria, one ventricle, and two aortae with a systemic circulation. The muscles of an iguana are very light in color due to the high proportion of fast-twitch, glycolytic muscle fibers, type A. 
These fibers are not very vascularized and are low in myoglobin, giving them their pale look. This high density of fibers allows iguanas to move very quickly for a short period of time, which facilitates short bursts of movement, but is inefficient for long duration movement, since cellular respiration in fibers is anaerobic. Several species of lizards, including the iguanas, have a pale scale towards the back of their heads marking the parietal eye. This organ is sensitive to changes in illumination and sends signals to the pineal gland noting the change between day and night. A photopigment commonly found in the lamprey, known as paraponopsin, is also found in the iguana, and is sensitive to ultraviolet light and aids in the signaling between day and night. Iguanas have developed an herbivorous lifestyle, foraging exclusively on vegetation and foliage. To acquire, process, and digest plant matter, herbivorous lizards must have a higher bite force relative to their size in comparison to carnivorous or omnivorous reptiles. The skull of the iguana has undergone modifications resulting in a strong bite force and efficient processing of vegetation, according to one study. To accomplish this biomechanically, Herbivorous lizards have taller and wider skulls, shorter snouts, and larger bodies relative to carnivorous and omnivorous reptiles. Increasing the strength of the skull allows for increased muscle presence and increases the ability of the skull to withstand stronger forces.